Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with episode 2158 of the Cabral Concept. This is our second Cabral house call of the weekend. Hopefully, you got to tune in yesterday. That was episode 2157. You may have already guessed that. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to follow along with all the questions today on this Cabral house call, Feel free to do so right at stephencabral.com forward slash 2158. Really looking forward to seeing what our community has written in with, with questions. So without further ado, I'm going to dive right into the show today. Hopefully you are uh, accustomed to these weekend shows. This is my time basically to really connect with our community, see what questions have come in, and really give you top of mind answers uh, as I look at this document for the first time. And I go through six questions on Saturdays, six questions on Sundays. It takes about six weeks or so for your questions to be answered. And we're picking up on November 21st is the first question that's come in. Uh, so if you know, if you've, if you wrote in before November 21st, your question has already been answered. And this is debuting on uh, the 2nd of 2022, January 2022. So uh, January 2nd, 2022. So let me wish you a happy New Year's. All right, let's get started. Victoria, our friend Victoria is a first. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Someone I know has been in the hospital with double pneumonia and tuberculosis. The antibiotics weren't helping or weren't weren't helping for a while, so they had to put her in an induced coma for a week and on a ventilator to keep her alive. Eventually, she left the hospital, but her ankle started hurting. After a review by doctors, they found something called Mycobacterium uh, hemophilium. That could possibly, could that possibly be infecting eating away our bone? They only had one very unfortunate solution to prevent this from spreading the rest of the body. I know you're not supposed to give medical advice, so I won't be asking for medical advice. If she would if she would look to help to fix this dis-ease in her body naturally, what do you think would be the best solutions? I'm trying to get some kind of naturopathic doctor to start working with her, looking for any possible guidance though that you may have. Wondering if this happened because of antibiotics she was put on, seven different kinds to keep the other infections at bay. Also, she's had an autoimmune disease most of her life and has been on strong steroids for 15 plus years. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, um, this is really the result of not just an antibiotic being used, but of autoimmune-based issues and being on medications for that. What happens is, over time, when you're on certain biologic drugs that suppress your immune system so you don't have autoimmune reactions, you know, you're just taking away the symptoms, of course, right, with these biologic-based drugs. Biologic's a very kind word of saying, you know, uh, shortchanging or shutting down your own immune system without finding the root cause, that eventually you can't fight off things like pneumonia or tuberculosis. This is not uncommon with people with rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis and and other uh, issues that take autoimmune drugs. Eventually you can't fight off things like, like I said, pneumonia, tuberculosis. So then you take many different types of antibiotics to try to kill these broad spectrum uh, bacteria. And then you end up with something like the uh, mycobacterium uh, hemophilum, which is what it's called. That's how it's pronounced. And, you know, it becomes a problem. I mean, it really does. And the reason why it's a problem is that this is a bacteria that modern medicine doesn't have an answer for, but your own body should be able to fight it off. So the, it just, there's so many layers to this. Let me, let me tell you what I would do if it was a family member. So you need to use both conventional medicine, especially in the short term, along with natural health, because you have to get back this person's natural immune system. It's the only way in the long run. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to figure out the root cause of this person's autoimmune based issues. So is it gut based? Is it viral based? Is it uh, heavy metal based? Is it environmental toxicity based? Is it stress based? I don't know. Like again, 
You don't know until you have a consultation with an individual and then you run something like the big five. With this individual, I would run the big five, but I would also run the bacteria and parasite stool test because parasites can play into autoimmune issues as well. So that's exactly what I would do. And again, there's no quick fix answer. If, if I mean, I know that you're not, Victoria, asking me for that, but like people write in all the time, hey, what's the protocol for MS? What's the protocol for Addison's disease? There's not a protocol. You have to understand that. The protocol is personalized on you. What's causing your autoimmune issue? What's causing your Addison's? And we figure it out through lab testing. That's how you do it. And then, yes, there are protocols from there. There are gut protocols, heavy metal protocols, functional medicine detoxes, et cetera, right? There's all protocols, but there's not the autoimmune because, again, you're talking about what? You're talking about a made-up disease name. It's not that I don't believe rheumatoid arthritis exists, but it exists as a collection of symptoms, not the name. That doesn't matter. Hashimoto's is just a name for autoimmune thyroid issues. But what's the root cause of uh, uh, of, uh, Hashimoto's? Viral, heavy metals like cadmium, mercury, fluoride, uh, bromine. Could be lack of certain uh, nutrients like iodine. Could be iodine displacement from chlorine. Uh, it could be gut-based issues. So again, that's the, we look at the underlying root cause so that Hashimoto's can exist. Like that, That's how you fix these things. So um, hopefully that's helpful. And again, I would go to stephencabral.com forward slash big five or stephencabral.com forward slash labs to find those labs to get started. And again, you'll work with your conventional medicine doctor and then you'll work with your natural health-based team. All right, Joanne is up next. Hey, Dr. Brawl, could you please explain how someone can have an issue with sulfur detoxification and why they get symptoms with foods high in sulfur? Which is the, what is the underlying root cause of this? How do you go about correcting this? Does this have a cor- correlation with SIBO? Plus, what is hydrogen, sulfide, bacteria, and how does it occur? Many thanks for your help. All right, let's break this down. I'm going to do a whole show on um, sulfur. Uh, it's kind of funny. When I was doing my... Uh, functional medicine study, they would just bring it up. And this is, is kind of presented from a conventional medicine-based platform, which I get it. It was mean, it was 90% medical doctors. Uh, so I, I totally understand. So then, you know, they don't necessarily look always at the underlying root cause, but they would say, hey, you know, some people just need to be put on a low sulfur diet, which I get. And in the beginning, that's, that's not necessarily a bad idea, but they never told them how to fix it, right? They never told them what the reason was. And so that's what I don't love about you know, functional medicine from a conventional perspective. But again, I'll save that topic for another day. So let me just share with you that a lot of it can be gut-based issues. There's no doubt about that. And I want to share with you why. When people have E. coli overgrowth, salmonella, especially salmonella enterica overgrowth, or clostridia or enterobacteria overgrowth, and you can find all of these, by the way, by running a candida metabolic and vitamins test, which is a great one for clostridium difficile, uh, And then you can also run the bacteria and parasite stool test. So I would definitely do that for anybody with sulfur-based issues. 100%. If you only ran two labs, that's what I would recommend. Like much more, or even over the food sensitivity test, I would run those. I would pretty much always pick those over food sensitivity test. Even though food sensitivity test is amazing, uh, it's not like, okay, underlying gut inflammation what are the reasons, SIBO, bacterial overgrowth, parasites, H. pylori, right? I think you need to find those out. So that's one reason. Okay. Again, conventional medicine will never tell you that. I don't know why. It's actually in the scientific literature. But again, they don't necessarily have a protocol for that, right? Uh, The other one, believe it or not, is that... uh, So sulfur, sulfur oxidized, when you look at that, it's essentially being turned into uh, cysteine methionine, if my biochemistry is serving me correctly, and I apologize uh, if it is not. And those are broken down and mainly excreted in the urine. Some of it can actually be used to be stored as or create glutathione, which is why sulfur amino acids are very, very important for phase two liver detox. But if someone does not have enough molybdenum, and I've gone through what molybdenum is and how it's used, uh, they're not going to be able to break it down properly. So sometimes it is a shortage or a greater need for molybdenum. And that can have to be genetic reasons of why they need a little bit more of it because there are certainly sulfur-based pathways that may be, uh, I like to use the word occluded in one in some way. So molybdenum could be a great one. And uh, that's already included, by the way, in the daily nutritional support. So if you're using that, you're getting your molybdenum as well. So hopefully, Joanna, that gave you a, a fairly comprehensive answer. Fairly. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sharon is up next. 
Hi, Dr. Brawl. I hope you're doing great. I was wondering if you could maybe give me some advice on the following. I'm a 42-year-old female, always have cold hands and feet, especially during the winter. In those months, my fingers will often swell up, look inflamed from the colds. I know that it has to do with low thyroid and very low blood pressure. I'm working on this with my health practitioner, but it's going slowly. So I'd really love to know if you have any great natural remedies to get my hands and feet warm. Thanks so much in advance for your answer and everything you do, especially for creating the CBO protocol. I'm almost finished with it. And my digestion has never been better. All right, Sharon, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, thank you so much. And I am doing well. So thank you for asking. So what can I say? How can I help? I think you're on the right path. I really do. I would definitely look at thyroid. I would definitely look at elevated levels of cortisol, both of which can lead towards rainids. But again, I don't want to put a label on you because again, I'm not providing medical advice, diagnosis, cure, or medical treatments. I'm helping you get to the underlying root cause. High levels of cortisol, high levels of stress, high levels of norepinephrine, high levels of dopamine. I would definitely, if you can, run a neurotransmitters test. If you've already run the stress hormones, mood and, me stress hormones, mood and metabolism, then run the neurotransmitters if you'd like. Again, there's no pressure on our end at all. Um, and you want to make sure you have enough of the calming, they're called inhibitory neurotransmitters, like GABA and like serotonin. And um, if not, well, there's great products out there. Uh, like sleep help support and and uh, even believe it or not, our fat loss city products have those. So what they do is they help with vasodilation. And a lot of people get great benefit from fat loss city because it's not just about weight loss. Uh, it is actually about circulation. It's about metabolism. It's about thermogenesis. So we need to improve your overall thermogenesis. I would love for you to do an infrared sauna or regular sauna. I'd love for you to do that daily. Start your day with it. And uh, it'll bring some warmth to your body, but will also help with circulation. It doesn't need to be super hot. That's not necessarily the goal. Uh, you can also do a warm Epsom salt bath at night. You could use magnesium at night. That will help as well for vasodilation. So again, I can't give you any medical advice, but these are all things that I would certainly look into. And uh, I think you'll find a lot of benefit from, all right? So adrenal soothe could be another one if you're high stress. Uh, but you, again, your practitioner already gave you these recommendations, I'm sure, if you were in that stress hormones immune metabolism. And if you haven't run that, run that first and the uh, neurotransmitters if you'd like. All right? All right. Anonymous is up next. Hi, Doc. Thanks for everything. I know that this is a family show, so I'll try to keep my... So I'll try to phrase my question in the right way. Choose the best alternative for your preferences. Alternative one. Are there any underlying root causes for sexual fetishes? or fetishism, sorry. Alternative two, are there any underlying root causes to why some people have a fruitful desire in which gratification is linked to abnormal degree to a particular object, item of clothing, old clothing, part of the body, etc. cetera? Uh, TIA. All right. So what I, I mean... This is, I, I think that this is okay. I'm, I'm not, again, like we talk about adult topics. So, you know, um, parents get to decide if this is the right uh, topic for their children or not. And of course, you can always stop the show or not listen to it or whatever it might be. Uh, but I always try to, like last week, I think I had to give a little prelude, you know, earmuffs uh, for kids uh, for a, a particularly adult topic. Uh, but, you know, what I would say here is, one is this is not my expertise, and so I always tell you when this is not my expertise. However, however, uh, what I my job is making correlations. So, I have uh, you can't see my whole office, but I have um, it's like a twenty foot wall, probably more, but let's call it twenty feet, and it's all whiteboard. And so, what I do is my, my job is to make correlations with with everything, and so correlations with autoimmune, correlations with labs, correlations with nutritional supplement formulas, correlations with herbs being used with functional medicine, nutrients, and so that's that's what I do. Um, that's what I enjoy doing. That's why I also work alone uh, because it's you know it's insane. If you if you come into my office, uh, it does not look so, like an office of a sane individual. Uh, but that's okay. You know that's that's what I do. It's what I love, and uh, I love. Uh, uh, whiteboarding all of uh, problems that I'm trying to work through for, for our community. Uh, all that to say that people with higher levels of dopamine, higher levels of sometimes norepinephrine, K2 
can be in lower levels of GABA and lower levels of serotonin. Can, so if we're looking at a Venn diagram, I, I love using Venn diagrams as well because it's a great way of kind of seeing the overlap. And I've done, I've done shows on, on this as well for neurotransmitters. Uh, they're more prone to obsessive compulsive disorders. Now, I'm not saying that's what this is. Okay? I'm not saying that at all. However, there can be more compulsions and, and that can happen with higher levels of dopamine, type A, norepinephrine individuals. And so that might be something to look at. I would actually run then that, it's kind of the same answer to Sharon before, is uh, the stress hormones, immune metabolism. But really the neurotransmitters might be a really nice way of looking at it. All right, so that's my best um, answer because outside of that, I'm simply not, I don't, I don't have any expertise in it. All right, Elizabeth is up next. How do you know what your exact body type is as well as what is better to do to lose weight, carb cycling, or macro, macroine. I put on 40 pounds, 54 years old, metabolism is shot. Okay, well, the good news is this. You can rebuild your metabolism. That's the good news. I've got so many podcasts. I mean, my, my Wednesday podcasts are dedicated to body transformation through wellness-based protocols. You know, we just need to see, hey, what's going on with your body? 54 years is young. It really is. Honestly, 54 years, 50 years ago was not young. Okay, 54 years now is is young. I mean, uh, I've got a I've got a ways to go before 54, but I know you know 54 will be there in the future. But here's why I'm saying that: many of my colleagues are 54, and they are in amazing shape. They are working just as hard as they ever have. They are loving life. They are engaged uh, mothers and fathers. I, I, I just. I don't want you to think 54 years old, metabolism's going down. No, okay, this is what we need to do. R run the big five. Like revamp your entire body. If you have not run the big five already, um, well, again, this is past the time when we had it, but it was like last week or the week before. Hopefully you're on the Equal Life newsletter because we offered it at $500 off. We do that sometimes to start the new year because it's the very best thing that you can do. I mean, that's the bottom line. Run the big five. Figure out what's going on with your thyroid, what's going on with cortisol, what's going on with the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, what's going on with your blood sugar, what's going on with vitamin D. We start there. So if you only, one run, if you only run one lab, run the stress hormones, mood and metabolism. If you can run the big five, run the big five. Okay. So now you're asking about uh, carb cycling versus macroine. They can both work. They really can. Carb cycling is going to be more challenging because you're going to switch things up. And macroine, you might do that on a daily basis. The good news is I have free podcasts on all of these topics. So I really want people to go back. I have a lot of podcasts, yes. But I'm telling you right now, if you go back... And you just start from the beginning. It might take you a year or two. I mean, I know that seems ridiculous, but if you listen for one hour a day, um, you're going to get the education that I wish I had when I was younger. That's it. And then you can pass it on to your children, your children's children. Maybe you'll become an integrative health practitioner. Maybe you become a certified health coach with IHP. Pass this information on to others. And that's your choice, of course. I'm going to give you the shows right now because they were easy for me to find. Episode 2077 and episode 2084. How to use carb cycling to lose weight. And the next one was, is macro cycling better than carb cycling? So there you go. I've answered both of them. And uh, that'll give you your exact answer. Then you can find those at stephencabal.com forward slash podcast, or just type in the number at the end. All right. Our last question of the day is from Laura. Laura says, hello, I'm a 27-year-old Vata. Oh, and by the way, Elizabeth, how to find your body type? stephencabal.com forward slash podcast. Scroll through the images at the top. Click on Ayurveda and it, you can listen to those shows and it will tell you how to figure out your body type. All right, Laura's up. All right, 27-year-old Vada. That's Laura. Uh, my at-home saliva test showed low cortisol in the AM and higher than optimal at night. I know this is adrenal fatigue and I've listened to all your shows on this. I feel exhausted in the morning, but still anxious. So I choose not to go for adrenal energy support. And I, I really want to uh, stress that because you're not talking about adrenal soothe. So we'll put that in there. Um, I already do the daily foundational protocol level three with magnesium before bed and zinc at dinner. I've done the CBO and CBO finisher do and my seasonal detox as well. Any recommendations for raising my cortisol levels in the morning naturally? I already Bought the light box, but not sure what else I can do to really feel. I really feel tired in the morning. Caffeine worsens my anxiety. Sleep is good. Seven to seven thirty, seven to seven and a half hours sleep every night with ninety minutes of REM and two hours of deep. All right, great information, very concise. Love it. Happy to help. Okay, 
So um, you might not be someone that's good with licorice root in the morning, okay? So here's the deal. We need to, we still need to lower. It was the same question. I think I, well, I got this yesterday, right? Um, this was, all right. So yesterday's question, I basically gave the same exact answer because it's the same, right? People would like try to catch me like, oh, we'll, we'll see what he says this time. No, it's always the same because honestly, we've, we've done this so many times. You need to lower evening cortisol first. Lower evening cortisol with the magnesium like you're doing. The zinc is amazing. Good job on that. Maybe use the uh, sleep help uh, support. Definitely one uh, to two droppers of the liquid melatonin. You don't need to use it forever. You can just taper off after a while, okay? So that's that with that. Get a good night sleep. Try to get more than seven to seven and a half hours if you can, uh, but you're still getting great sleep, which is great, okay? Try to get eight if you can, because if you're dealing with adrenal issues, then try to get more. Okay, uh, more hours before midnight, the better. Try not eating three to four hours before bed. Sounds like you're doing all these things, so fantastic. Now, how do we get going in the morning if we're not going to use a product like Adrenal Energy Support? All right, and again, you can use the Adrenal Soothe at dinner time to really calm things down. So the, one of the best ways is just to go for a walk, all right? I know it doesn't seem like much, but you're going to get the circulation going. You're going to get your body moving. I talk about the asanas, the asanas I do in the morning, my body weight exercises, all you might need. Uh, what I'll tell you what I do in the morning. I do some push-ups. I do some rows. I do some um, V holds. It's I do this literally every single day. I've been doing it now for like eight years. And and so, but I'm, that's the reason I say that is like I'm struggling to recall my exact morning routine, even though I do it every single morning and I don't even think about it. Uh, no, I literally go from my push-ups to squats, and then I do uh, rows. I used to do chin-ups, but my place now, I don't have any place to put that little chin-up bar. Uh, and then I go into walking lunges, and then I do uh, V-ups uh, for my core. And that's all that I do. It's not meant to be strenuous. I'm not looking to get a workout in. Uh, what I'm doing is moving the circulation of my body, and uh, I'm getting blood flow going. That might be something that's very helpful as well, because you want to do something to not spike adrenaline or norepinephrine, but just to get your body going in that, that nice little movement. So that might be helpful. And just make sure you're getting some good nourishment for breakfast that you're not skipping breakfast as well. All right, that's a place to start. Always feel free to write back in. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in today. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. And of course, I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new week. Hopefully you'll join us. New year, new week, mindset. Said Motivation Monday. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. And believe it or not, it is already that time of the year. And just to make sure that you make this your absolute best year yet for overall wellness, body transformation, and anti-aging, I need to make sure that you are aware that once a year, this time of year, every year, we offer $500 off the big five. That means you are getting already a discount of $600 if you were to purchase all of the labs separately every single day at Ecolife. So we take $600 off. Now, what we're going to do at this time of the year is offer another $500 off. This is the absolute best savings you will see anywhere for the big five labs to look at your food sensitivities, to look at your heavy metals, to look at your mitochondrial energy, to look at your gut health in terms of bacteria, yeast, to look at your omega-3 and inflammation levels and so much more. It's going to show your vitamin levels, your mineral levels. I cannot recommend them enough. I really can't. I used to run them once a year. I now run the big five twice a year. I feel it to be that important. You want to make sure that you are not filling up that rain barrel. You want to make sure that you are not on the cusp of moving towards dis-ease. Your job is to make sure that your body is balanced at all times. The big five is going to show you the underlying root cause of so many health imbalances. I want to make sure that, again, like I said, this is your absolute best year ever for wellness, for body transformation, and for anti-aging. And the best way to do that is by saving over $1,000, an extra $500 right now, this week while supplies last. We have just about 100 big fives that we are doing at this $500 off. And of course, each one of them come with a 90-minute health coaching consultation with our team to explain the results, and also design a program built just for you. This is why we can't offer a thousand of these because we're actually giving 90 minute consultations with each one. There is no better deal out there right now and there is absolutely nothing better in terms of personalized wellness than the big five. You can find it right now at stephencabral.com forward slash big five. That's just B-I-G and the number five. 
stephencabral.com forward slash big five. I hope you take advantage of this. Have your best year yet.